What's going on YouTube? Johnny Mac here. Today I'm bringing you something really special. For all you Armistice fans out there, I present to you my monster build. So sit back, strap in, and enjoy the show because this build really drops the never mind. All right, all right, everybody. Now, let's not mislead anybody about the, what they just saw. I will make a little disclaimer here, and I will say there were some divination buffs from this Dreamstone involved. However, not so fast. Let's get into it. Now, in my Community Builds episode number one, I went over Armistice and his Archon Fury and how he's all about that breach damage. If you haven't watched that video yet, I'll leave a link in the description below, and there's also a link in the upper right hand corner of this video. What a lot of people don't understand about Armistice is that his Augment Constellation is optimal for this type of build. First up, Force of Nature. Gain 5% weapon technique charge whenever you defeat an enemy. This is kind of big because what we want is we want to keep our techniques up as often as possible. This Augment helps feed our technique. And we also, of course, have weapon technique damage on that augment. Absorption. Gain 50% Archon Fury charge speed for 10 seconds whenever you hit a weak point. This feeds directly into our next objective. We need to hit those weak points. And with that, we also have the weak point damage. And like I went over in my previous video, Archon Fury for him is very important because he offers that breach damage through his Archon Fury, which gives him a huge damage boost. Spark. 22% weapon technique charge speed for 10 seconds whenever you hit a weak point. Once again, we're hitting those weak points and we're getting weapon technique damage on that card as well with 23 and 20. Resilience, gain 131 overhealth whenever you soul shatter an enemy. This is the next aspect of this build. As some may have noticed, we actually don't feature very much vitality in this build at all. This is where this compensates. We're gonna be focusing on getting overhealth so that way we can run lower vitality and higher might. Loyalty. Whenever you hit a weak point, gain 1% Archon Fury charge and 38% Archon Fury charge speed for 10 seconds. Primal Energy. Gain 145 overhealth whenever you use your lifestone. I'm not too sure about this card particularly. I may keep it in or I may take it out later, but considering the fact it generates 145 overhealth whenever you use your lifestone, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but this is an augment I might remove later. Sacred Flame. Adjacent augments grant an additional 65% might. This is an absolute must in my opinion, and the thing to understand about this particular augment is that it must be situated between or directly connected to two other might augments. Twilight Bloom, 94% weapon technique damage if at least two adjacent augments are red. Once again, the thing to understand about this particular type of augment is that it must be directly connected to another might augment, or if it's a vitality augment that says the same thing, it must be directly connected to the particular type of color augment that it's referring to. And as you can see, it has 94% inside white brackets. If it's not in white brackets and it says zero, then it's not active. And then lastly, mirror. Apply the mark of weakness whenever you hit a weak point. Once again, feeding into those weak points since we are targeting those almost exclusively. Adding an extra debuff to any enemy that you already have hit a weak point on is going to be huge, especially whenever you start hitting those heavies in the tower or those bosses in the late game. Very important to have as much debuffs up as possible. Now let's take a look at the equipment. First up is Vasara, the legendary Warhammer. I'm not going to lie, I will say that whenever I first started this build, this is what I built around. So whenever you defeat an enemy with a weapon technique, you gain 377 over health and your over health no longer degenerates. There are stronger variants of this out there, but this is the best rolled one that I've received so far. But this hammer is amazing. Next up 
is the Maul of Obsidian Pack, the legendary Warhammer that the community has come to know as the Bubble Hammer. When you perform a technique, you create a time bubble that slows enemies by 30%, and you also gain 2% banner charge whenever you hit an enemy with a weapon technique. Phoenix Talisman, the legendary charm. You apply the mark of weakness whenever you inflict poison. Unfortunately, this particular component doesn't fit with the build, but it's kind of the best I have right now because it features 18% breach damage, but I will be replacing this for sure. A Brother's Promise, the legendary amulet. 18% chance to summon a spirit warrior ally whenever you soul shatter an enemy. Now I really like this because if you're in a solo situation or even a co-op situation, anytime you soul shatter an enemy, you have a chance to spawn one of those spirit allies and they are really good at getting the attention of some of the extra mobs around you. So it kind of serves as like an extra layer of protectiveness around you. Archon's tier. Primary effect is every 10 seconds you have a chance to have a 36% critical hit chance and 135 critical hit damage. And as you can see, I've bumped it up to a total of plus 48% weak point damage. Standard of the Golden Lion for my banner gives 33% weapon technique charge speed, shield charge speed, and Archon Fury charge speed. All those three main aspects that we have been focusing on this entire build all in one banner. For my ring number one, Predator's Band. Apply the mark of fragility to nearby enemies whenever you activate Archon Fury. So once again, when you are in the middle of a big pack of enemies and you pop that Archon Fury, you're going to debuff the enemies around you so they take more damage. And lastly, Dawn Lord's Signet. Whenever you defeat an enemy with a takedown, the enemy explodes and deals 2,654 physical damage to nearby enemies and the explosion has a 50% chance to inflict bleed. Now, I don't really use bleed. I don't have anything that feeds off of bleed to increase my damage. However, I could in the future, but this is very good in co-op, and it is also very good for solo, because when you perform a takedown, that splash damage will help deal extra DPS to the mobs around you. Now, here's a little brief pop-up of my skill tree. I'm not going to bother to go over that skill tree because it's all pretty basic, nothing really advanced to go over, and I'm sure that anybody that's watching this is probably already familiar with the skill tree at this point.
And there you have it, everybody. There's my Armistice monster build. I hope you all found it as enjoyable as I did to actually film this for you. I had a great time with this build, and I'm looking forward to making it even stronger in the future. And as always, guys, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe to be notified when I make future uploads of videos just like these. Thanks for watching.